Hey, I'm Lauren from Giorgio Draws and today I'm going to be painting a simple watercolour wreath, uh, Christmassy themed and feel free to paint along with me or you can just sit back and enjoy. Okay, so to start off my wreath I'm just going to need a circle um, just as a guideline and I have a handy candle that is the perfect size for me. So I always tend to use something that's to hand. Um, you could use a protractor, but just make sure that you don't leave a dent in the middle if you do. Okay, so I've got my circle. I'm just gonna fade that a little bit because I don't want it to be too visible at the end. Cool, okay. So, as you can see here, I have already chosen my colours. So I'm going for super festive and I have a pale, a dark green and then a nice like cherry berry red to pop. And I did a few little tests because I'm just going to go with the flow with this wreath. So I haven't sketched anything other than my circle. I'm just going to see what happens. I'm a little bit rusty. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to go for this kind of eucalyptus spray, maybe a bit of a Christmas tree and some berries. So let's go. So first off, I'm going to do my pale layer. So I like kind of messy wreaths that aren't too symmetrical. So what I want to do is create different sprigs that link up to each other rather than kind of going around the whole wreath at once. So I start with my palest layer, which is, I'm using the, my Lettuce Barrow palette. This is one of my all time favorites. It was a collab that I did with Lettuce Barrow. And this is her Nicosia Green, and it's the perfect eucalyptus color. I just haven't ever been able to mix a better one. So that is my go-to. So we're gonna start with that. So I'm just going to start by popping a few sprigs on. Just so I know where I'm going. And then I'll start adding the leaves. So the eucalyptus leaves are kind of round, but not perfectly round, which gives you adequate scope to not mess up. <laughs> and I'm just kind of painting whatever looks good. I'm going to add a bit of water. I quite like to vary the the depth of color so although we were only using three colors today i'm going to make sure that there's lots of variation in tone so the more water that we add the less value there is in the color and this is really nice for sort of working with layers because it helps create depth and this is watercolor right so we can always jump back in and add some more colour if we need to. So just super loose, I'm not worrying too much. It's really difficult to judge a wreath at this point as well. So um, I always say when I'm teaching, there will come a point when you hate your wreath. <laughs> you just have to like persevere with it. So at this early point, don't worry too much about how it's looking or the balance or anything like that. Just get a base layer down and we can take it from there. Okay, 
So that's our first kind of layer done, really simple. And I've left more or less even gaps between each spray, which I'm then going to fill in with something else for our next layer. Um, looking at this, I've left a slightly bigger gap here. So I could either extend one of these or I could add in a whole other spray. Um, I think for this, I'm going to add a kind of half extension thing. There we go. So straight away, you'll notice now that that makes the reef feel really imbalanced and it would be really easy to go, oh my God, it's just like, it's not gonna work now. Um, it will, it's gonna be fine. Keep going. So you'll notice I've just started to edge away from our circle a little bit more. I enjoy wreaths that are kind of uh, more messy, I suppose, than neat. If you, if you like a tight, pretty wreath, then you can always sort of keep things a little bit more in line with the initial line that you've drawn. If you're like me and you like them a bit wild and a bit crazy, then you can kind of keep coming away from that. And the more that you pull away from that circle, the more that they will feel like they're developing a life of their own, which is lovely. So that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm happy with that for my first layer. And what I have to be careful of now is not smudging it. Um, sometimes when I'm working, I will just go away at this point for five minutes and let everything settle. But with such a simple wreath, I think we're going to be okay. So I'm just going to carry on and try not to put my fingers in it because I'm a lefty. And if you're a lefty too, you know. Oh, and easy for us. Okay, perfect. So moving on, I'm just going to get some darker green on my brush. So for the darker green, um, I've been using the Winsor & Newton's Cotman palette, which I really rate uh, more on that later. But we have their kind of sap green colour mixed with a bit of black and a little bit of emerald from the Letter Sparrow palette. So I realised that um, that's quite a tricky one to recreate at home, but we're just looking for a rich dark green shade. So whatever you have in your palette, if you don't have anything that's kind of dark or rich enough, maybe add a bit of black and that will give you a really deep tone. So we're just looking for something that's gonna contrast with our pale eucalyptus green. So I'm feeling, I want something fluffy and ferny for the next bit. Is it ferny? Is it fur? It's probably fur. Fur tree. Let's go fur tree. So I'm just going to start with a few stems. Okay. 
that just helps to give me an idea of where this greenery is going to go. So to create anything that's kind of spiky or fluffy, I will get the brush wet and then dab some of that off because I want it to get quite dry quite quickly so that we can create these like super fluffy textures. So I've dabbed off and I'm just going to keep brushing back into that stem. So I'm going from the outside in. You can see I've already touched the paper, but that's fine. One of the joys of messy wreaths is we can cover anything. So you can hopefully see already how much texture we've gained. And I'm just going to keep going. I really like this um, contrast with the eucalyptus, so smooth and elegant. So I'm going to base my wreath on the two variations. Something so satisfying about painting these. Ooh, okay. Cool. So that's my first little Christmas tree sprig. I'm feeling that. It's looking pretty. And I'm just going to move on to the next one. So there are already things I can see here that I don't like. So I don't like that this sits so obviously um, with a gap. That's something that I'm going to come back to because I want to see where the wreath, where it, what it becomes in the space that it takes me to do the other two. I might look at it and feel different. I might think, okay, actually it needed that. So I'm just going to halt, do the next bit and then come back to it. So I'm also going to turn my sketchbook a little bit just because partially because it's wet but also because I find it easier to work at an angle maybe that's just me because I'm a lefty but do what makes you comfortable So again, you can vary the value here a little bit. Um, I wouldn't go too pale because the thinner the lines that you're painting, the less obvious they're going to be when they dry. So, and with these especially, I want them to stand out and look um, super obvious. So I'm sticking to quite strong colour.
Okay, so that's our second little chunk. Um, speaking of chunk, it is feeling a bit chunkier than this one. So I think I'm just going to go back into this one now and add a little bit just to thicken it up so that it's looking even. It wouldn't be a problem. It, I could probably leave it and you, it would blend in in the end, but I have made that one quite a bit chunkier. So I'll do it now before I forget. Okie doke. And then moving on to our last piece. So hopefully you'll notice that the wreath, all of the greenery is carrying itself around in the same direction. And this just helps the wreath to flow. It's, it's always going to look more refined and considered if all of your greenery is kind of following each other. And you can always have bits going a different way. You can do, well, you can do whatever you want with the wreath. There are no rules. But personally, this is just how I like to work. So that, I don't know, it gives me a little bit of confidence that when I've done this wreath, it's going to look how I imagine it to. So you can see there how my strokes have got thicker. That's because I had quite a lot of paint on the brush, which is why I'm kind of jumping between them to get rid of some of that excess. And then I can go back and really feather this one out. I don't know why, but some of these come together so quickly and then others seem to take ages to feather. Or maybe I'm just getting impatient. Getting too excited for the berries.
Okay, so now we have our second layer. And I'm fairly happy with how it's looking, but I think I would like to do a few smaller sprigs just to kind of start to tie the two layers in together. At the moment for me, they look a little bit too separate. So I'm gonna do that by slightly overlapping and just kind of extending the branches so that we can have a few bits of fir tree further out, crossing over into the layers. And that'll just kind of start to make things feel more organic. I'm going to do one more here and then we're going to move on. Okay. So, as mentioned, there's going to be some berries going on. Very excited about that. And I think I'm going to add them in now so that they are evenly spaced throughout the wreath. We've got some control as to where they're going to go. And then once I've done that, if I feel like we can add a few more sprigs or it needs some balancing, we can do that. So, I just have a bit of the crimson red and the orange from the Windsor & Newton palette. I'm just gonna get lots of color on the brush and dot some berries on. So I'm feeling clumps today, I think. I'm gonna go in with kind of chunky sections. Oh, so Christmassy. So as with the greenery, I'm just trying to keep even spacing between everything that I add, although I want it to look kind of um, random, which is why I'm changing up quite how many berries I'm placing, I'm changing up how many I'm chucking into each section, just so that it feels relaxed and it doesn't feel too kind of uh, structured.
suddenly looks so festive. I love it. And what I think I'd like to do is just have the odd berry or the odd spray that isn't actually connected just to give the wreath a little bit more growth so it feels wider. So I'm just placing a few berries loose that we're going to come back to shortly. Okay, I think she's getting there. So I'm just gonna to swap to a super fine brush. Uh, the brushes I've been using today are by a company called Coom. These are memory point brushes. And the smaller one I use is a double zero. And it's really great for tiny fine details. So I just want a tiny bit of brown, maybe with a bit of green. And I don't want much at all because I want it to be a really fine, delicate line. And I'm just going to give these berries some branches. Definitely going to turn the sketchbook now because I will smudge this. There we go, so all our berries have got stems. So now is the point where I will step back and assess my reef. So I find it really helpful to just completely look away, go and do something else for a few minutes, come back to it. Um, taking a photo is actually really good as well because you, you can view it from a different perspective. So here we are, this is where we're up to. So what I'm thinking is, it's getting there, it's looking pretty good. I just want to make a few tweaks. As I can see here around the eucalyptus, it's looking quite sparse. And I've also got this mark that I made earlier, so I want to cover that up. So I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm going to add another greenery element, but I'm not going to do anything wild with it because I want to keep this wreath quite simple and pretty. So I'm just going to make a slightly darker green. So I have Lettuce Barrows Emerald. I'm going to add in some black. And then I'm just going to check that the colour is going to work. I think it needs a bit more. I might even add a bit of brown actually. So it's not too heavy, it'll get richer. 
but not heavy. Okay. So because I don't want to be too heavy with this, I'm just placing my stems in in advance again so that I'm conscious of where I'm dropping such a heavy colour. It's going to draw the eye because it's such a dark colour. So it's to be used sparingly. And I'm doing a similar style to the eucalyptus, but I'm just varying up the colour and the style of the leaves. And it'll look totally different then. So I was actually quite hesitant about adding in a different element to this wreath, but I'm kind of enjoying it so far. That is the beauty with wreaths, you, you really can't go wrong. You just keep going, keep adding. If you think you've added the wrong thing, switch it up or add it in another place. There's so much to be learned from practicing wreaths. So I, I always feel like even if I end up with a wreath that I just hate by the end of it, I've learned. I've learned about composition, I've learned about colour matching, and I can take that away and remember it for my next wreath. Well, hopefully we won't hate this one.
So again, I'm just being really conscious of where I'm adding these darker elements and I don't want it to feel too harsh, just adding three dark pieces. It's going to look really strained and it's just going to draw your eye. So I'm dropping in odd little sections just to disperse that a little bit and hopefully make it feel a little bit less harsh. Okay, so I'm happy. I'm feeling like the wreath has good flow. I'm enjoying it. I'm just gonna add a few more berries, I think, because it's Christmas. Why not? Let's do some extra festive. So I think I'm just gonna thicken up some of the sprigs I've already done. Final one. And that is done. So there we have it, it's my finished wreath. And yeah, I'm feeling festive just looking at it. And there's so many diverse ways that we can use wreaths. Like this would be so beautiful on the front of a card or even as like a festive print for your house. Um, you just can't go wrong with a wreath and they are super fun and super informative as well. So have a go. If you do have a go, please tag me. Let me know how you get on in the comments. If you have any questions, advice, uh, again, just let me know in the comments and, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell because you want to be notified on any new videos. I'm going to be dropping a new video every week. Happy painting, guys.